If you're an early adopter of technology, be that a car, be that a television, PC hardware or a games console, you are more likely, unfortunately, to deal with problems than what someone is, say, three to six months down the line. Being an early adopter sometimes can kind of suck, and the RTX 4090 has been no exception. Now, the good news is it's pretty actually easy to circumvent one of the big problems that users have been experiencing with the RTX 4090. Shortly after launch, numerous folks were reporting that the RTX 4090 was essentially going on fire slash the power connector was melting, and it all stemmed mostly from user error, and this can easily be corrected with a couple of very simple steps. As you probably guessed then from the video title, we're going to be basically explaining how to resolve these issues as well as what the root cause is. Consider this just a quick guide to installation of an RTX 4090 and minimize your likelihood that your graphics card is going to go on fire. NVIDIA's statement reads as follows. Our findings to date suggest that a common issue is that the connectors are not fully plugged into the graphics card. To help ensure the connector is secure, we recommend plugging the power dongle into the graphics card first to ensure that it's firmly and evenly plugged in before plugging in the graphics card to the motherboard. So I decided to make this video then as kind of a PSA. Here you can see a side-by-side -side photo of my own RTX 4090 with the power plug both improperly inserted as well as inserted all the way in. My advice here is basically to do exactly as Nvidia suggests. Attempting to plug in the 12 VHPWR into the uh, card while the card itself is in the slot is tricky because for one you're placing a lot of pressure on the PCIe slot itself depending on how the card is mounted, the size of the card and so on. Secondly, you're also likely uh, enjoying a poor review of what's actually going on. The best case scenario therefore is to plug the cable in while the card is on your desk but obviously this may not be possible depending on your PSU and particular setup. So, insertion depth is very important here. You want the full length of the connector to be pushed into the plug, and there should be no gap. You can listen for a nice clicking sound too as it's pushed in. Again, when it's plugged in, there should be no gap at all between the male and female connectors. Now, if it's not been plugged in before, it might be a bit tight, insert pun here, so do make sure that you've lined everything up and then give it a small wiggle. Obviously, if it's fully inserted, you should see no real play there and essentially you will um, notice that the connection is nice and firm. And that's it. Now you can plonk the GPU into your PCIe slot and hook up your PSU as you would have done, say, an RTX 30. Here we're running a quick test bench. Excuse the, let's say, scuffed setup for now. We're rocking an Intel i9-13900K and our RTX 4090 is a palette of game rock RTX 4090 and Doom Eternal plays a dream at 4K, or should I say nightmare. There you have it guys, as you can see, the root cause according to multiple investigations as well as Nvidia themselves is basically user error. Now I'm sure that there are going to be individuals who have experienced graphics cards failures just because, well, the card is faulty. This could be, again, from the power connector, it could be from the display port not functioning, it could just be that the card itself is dead on arrival. And unfortunately, any hardware, whether that's a processor, a graphics card, whether that's a well, you know, anything basically that you can purchase, unfortunately, that's just the reality of things. What I would say to you is that if you can wait a couple of weeks, three, four weeks is ideal before purchasing stuff, that is a perfect scenario because you get a much better understanding if there are teething problems with, an, with a specific product. For example, you know, some of the early Ryzen um, boards for the Ryzen 1000 series, they weren't exactly great on launch, others were better. And that would have helped, of course, because ultimately speaking, reviewers can only do so much. If, even if, you know, every reviewer ever you read, each and every single review, they may, may not just have encountered that specific issue. So again, I would probably wait a couple of weeks if you can. I do realize, again, that not everyone can do that. For example, if you've sold your old hardware to help fund the new hardware, or you're just building a new PC or whatever, then clearly that's not always possible. But with that said, hopefully you have found the video enjoyable or at least somewhat useful. If you have, you know what to do. It's YouTube, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.